with WWE being sold to UFC's parent company Endeavor and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Reacting to her win over Asuka at WrestleMania and her unbeaten streak at the event, Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair said at the post-show press conference, I definitely think this is the new streak. I did it at WrestleMania 37, didn't think I could top that, and WrestleMania 38 to step in the ring with some amazing women. Then to step in the ring with Asuka to make it three, I'm hopefully on my way to being Miss WrestleMania and this being the new streak. At that same press conference, Roman Reigns said this about the bloodline falling his win over Cody Rhodes. If this is baseball, then we're just in the third inning. I've said it so long that we're just scratching the surface. I told y'all it had to be a month after I came back in 2020 at SummerSlam. We're running stuff. We're not just doing TikTok or YouTube shorts. You're going to have to expand. You're going to have to open up your attention span. You're going to have to pay attention for longer than 20 seconds, y'all. That's what we're doing here. We're giving you filet mignon. This isn't McDonald's. This isn't fast food. We're giving you the good stuff and I meant it and I kept my word. As he made his return to WWE to face The Miz at WrestleMania, Shane McMahon would go down in the ring and not get up. As PW Insider said, Shane McMahon twisted his knee or ankle during his WWE return and couldn't get back up to complete the segment. While Snoop Dogg and The Miz continued the segment, Shane was taken out of the ring and helped out to ringside. Talking to WrestleBinge, Bushwhacker Luke revealed his partner Butch had been hospitalized prior to attending signings as he said, I'm so exciting, I'm waiting for the fans to come in and pumped up, but there's a sad part of the story. My partner Butch is in the hospital. He's in the ICU ward in the local hospital next door over a situation with his medication. He flew in from New Zealand on Wednesday. He was all good Friday morning. He was incognito. I asked for some prayers for him out there. Get him out and get him back in action right here in LA. A GoFundMe has been set up for Butch as it reads, the Bushwhackers were a fun comedy team. They entertained fans with their character work during what is known as the golden era of professional wrestling. Their contributions to the industry earned them a WWE Hall of Fame induction in 2015. That being said, we have some sad news to share. On one half of the team, Bushwhacker Butch Miller has been hospitalized after arriving in Los Angeles for a signing during the WrestleMania weekend. Butch had arrived alongside his long friend and brother Luke Williams. The duo has been together for more than 50 years on the road and everyone was looking forward to this comeback. The beloved team gave their best years to the industry, earning respect and love to only from their mates, but also from their fans. From being the sheep herders to the bushwhackers in WWF, they earned their spot in the industry history, and they gave so much to us in time to give back to them. Please help us help bushwhacker Butch Miller and his family to cover his medical bills and needs. Everything little amount counts. Let's all show our love to a face only a mom can love. Thanks in advance. With a pro wrestling star accusing Rick Steiner of using transphobic slurs at WrestleCon, it seems the legend has been banned from future events, as it was reported that PWInsider.com was told that since Rick Steiner had left the event to attend last night's WWE Hall of Fame ceremony, WrestleCon did not have the ability to speak with Steiner until this morning. We were told that Steiner was informed he was not allowed to enter or take part in the remainder of WrestleCon's events. Steiner was not booked by the convention itself, but was brought in by a third-party vendor who had purchased table space at the event. WrestleCon is attempting to facilitate the two parties speaking about the incident, but thus far, that has not happened. WrestleCon would put out this statement. WrestleCon regrets the events that took place at yesterday's convention and apologizes to Gazelle Shaw. We aim to promote a safe and inclusive environment for all LGBTQIA plus members of the wrestling community. The issue has been addressed, and we hope the remainder of the convention can be a positive experience for all.
with it looking like UFC's parent company Endeavor will be buying WWE. Sean Ross Sapp reported that another source in Endeavor was confident that a sale would lead to additional opportunities for talent, with the source pointing out that UFC fighters are allowed to have exclusive content pages such as OnlyFans and Brand Army for additional income. However, an agent that has worked with both UFC and WWE talent was quick to point out that UFC has let top fighters walk over paying them, passing on dream fights, in addition to repeatedly taking steps to eliminate outside advertisement in cage for fighters. It should be noted that UFC arranges their own outfitting sponsors, though the money varies based on what a fighter could command themselves. The sale in general has been a major talking point backstage at WrestleMania Night 2, but talent truly aren't sure what's going on. Nobody from the bottom of the card to the top of the card was given any true indication who a potential buyer would be. Several talent contacted us to say they were ecstatic that it didn't end up sold to a Saudi Arabia-led group. We were told that the relationship between WWE and Saudi Arabia was set to continue. Staying on the topic of a WWE sale, Brad Shepard noted that a source in WWE told me the thought is that Vince McMahon is comfortable with the sale because when Endeavor bought UFC, they allowed Dana White to remain the face and leader of it. This means Vince can still be the heart and soul of WWE. He has his job, he gets paid out, and not much else is expected to change in that regard. Talking to CNBC with Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel, chairman of WWE, Vince McMahon mentioned the hush money scandal as he said, I've made mistakes, obviously, personally and professionally through my 50-year career. I've owned up to every single one of them and then moved on. I'm not sure of the legacy stuff. I'm not going to write it. I don't know. I want to say, as someone who had an extraordinary amount of fun, great passion for what they did, and wound up with the biggest deal he's ever done in his life. Talking about the sale of WWE to Endeavor, Vince McMahon said, Given the incredible work that Ari and Endeavor have done to grow the UFC brand, nearly doubling its revenue over the past seven years, and the immense success we've already had in partnering with their team on a number of ventures, I believe that this is without a doubt the best outcome for our shareholders and our stakeholders. Together, we will be a 21 plus billion dollar live sports and entertainment powerhouse with a collective fan base of more than a billion people and an exciting growth opportunity. The new company will be well well positioned to maximize the value of our combined media rights, enhance sponsorship monetization, develop new forms of content, and pursue other strategic mergers and acquisitions to further bolster our strong stable of brands. I, along with the current WWE management team, look forward to working closely with Ari and the Endeavor and UFC teams to take the business to the next level. With a WWE sale, it seems some are getting a massive bonus, as Sean Ross Sapp reported. Nick Khan will receive a $15 million bonus, Triple H a $5 million bonus, in light of their significant contributions to the company prior to and in connection with the transactions and to promote retention. Sean Ross Sapp would also add that the other potential suitors had people that we spoke with prior reiterated how much WWE had proven they didn't need Vince McMahon at all, let alone want him involved. They even called it a big potential hurdle for a sale. When it comes to WWE's relationship with Saudi Arabia, WWE CEO Nick Khan told Axios, Our relationship with the kingdom is a terrific partnership for which we're appreciative of. And you know, nothing in terms of anyone else's prior experience will affect that. We think that we've delivered the product in the way that the kingdom wanted it delivered. We have a multiple year agreement with them in place. We're excited to do a show. We'll be back there May 27th for a big premium live event. When asked if he will be as involved in creative in WWE as he was in the past, Vince McMahon told CNBC, yes and no, on a higher level, yes, in the weeds, which I have always been in the weeds in the past, no, can't do that. Vince McMahon would also say this about an in-ring return, that's not gonna happen.
Speaking of WWE creative, John Pollock reported that per sources, an internal email was sent out in WWE and included the line that Paul Levesque will remain WWE's chief content executive. The email was sent by Vince McMahon to those within the company. According to Brandon Thurston, WWE and Endeavor have entered into an agreement to merge WWE and UFC according to a new SEC filing. WWE employees were sent an email from Vince McMahon announcing the transaction and that there is an all-employees meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern. Going back to that interview, Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel revealed that WWE and UFC will be going public with a new company name, as he said. We're working on it now, very soon. Hopefully, the company can go public within the next four to six months, depending on the government. When it comes to negotiating TV rights fees, Vince McMahon said the rights fees are coming up. No, they have not started the talks. It seems that an NXT tag team is looking to get out of their WWE contracts with it said that Fightful can confirm that the former grizzled young vets Jagger Reed and Rip Fowler have requested their releases from WWE. They've been involved with Schism of late on NXT. We haven't heard a reason why they've asked for their releases, but they're expected to announce themselves shortly as well. The duo has been in NXT for over three years. Both men are veterans of over a decade and are expected to be in demand on the US indie scene in addition to the UK. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.